have your Bibles there at 1 Samuel chapter 27. We're journeying through the life of David. And we've come to a place in David's life where he's encountering something that most of us will encounter in our lives. And we have to see some reasons for it, the results of it, and hopefully how to uh, have a remedy to it. And, and what I'm talking about is David at this point in his life is actually in, encountering depression. This is the point when David goes through a spirit of depression. Now, last week we saw in David's life that he didn't respond appropriately whenever Nabal was uh, attacking him and accusing him and, and disrespecting him. We already know in David's life, usually a lot of people, and in, in they think about David, think David was this perfect guy except for what he did with Bathsheba. But that's not true. <laughs> David had other issues too. We saw last week that issue. And we also find out that David goes through depression. That David has a low point in his life. Now, before I talk about and identify David's depression, I want to make a few statements, and you need to write these down. It will help you in regard to depression. Here's something you need to write down. Anyone and everyone at some time will struggle with depression. You need to write that down. You hear me? Anyone and everyone at some time will struggle with depression. I dare say if we went through this group and everybody was honest, because most of the time we're not honest, especially not honest at church. <laughs> the most dishonest place in the world is church. It is. Because we all come to church and we act like everything's fine. Well, everything's wonderful with me. When we may be hurting inside, we may be going through struggles inside, we don't want anybody at church to know that. But if we were to be honest, all of us would say, yes, there have been times that I've struggled with depression. Anyone, everyone. Now, you need to write that down. You'll need to know that. Here's the second truth I want you to write down. Depression is not a sin. Depression is not a sin. Now, sin can lead to depression. If you have sin in your life, that can lead to depression. And, and here's the other thing. <coughs> that whenever you're depressed, it can lead to sin. But depression itself is not sin. If you sin, it can lead to your depression. And if you're depressed, it can lead you to sin. You understand that? You need to know that. All right. Third statement about depression. The basic cause of depression is when our outward forces are greater than our inward strength. Now, when I say outward forces... Those forces can be outside or they can be inside. But they're forces that are working against our inner strength. The Apostle Paul, if you want to read something about that, read in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 5 and 6. The Apostle Paul talks about the God who comforts the depressed comforted him. That means the Apostle Paul went through depression. And in verse 5, he tells you why. He said, I was tired, I was weary. There were pressures without and fears within, and all of these things caused me to be depressed. See, when things press on you and press in you and push on you, whether they'll be outward forces or inward fears, when those things press on you and it's greater than the strength that's inside of your spirit, then you can be depressed. See, depressed means to flatten out. <laughs> it means it's just to flatten it out. Have any of you ever gone out to your car, your pneumatic tire? You know, pneumatic means it's got air in it, right? And you're glad it's got air in it rather than solid rubber because it would be a mighty rough ride. You, you ride on pneumatic tires. Have any of you ever gone outside and found out that it was flat on one side? Oh, yeah, it's just flat to the ground. Now, what happened? Something let the air out. Something let the air out. But see, air itself, if, if it's in there and it's a solid base, it'll hold up a lot of things. Isn't it amazing that air can hold up a, a car? Isn't that something? Air is in a ball. It can hold up all kind of pressure against a, a ball whenever the ball is filled with air. I, I've watched people fill up air mattresses, and 200 and 300 pound people lay on those air mattresses. It holds them up. How does that air do that? It, it, it's just because there's greater pressure inside than the pressure on the outside. And you're okay. But what gets you depressed is when there's a greater pressure on the outside than there's an inside. And you flatten out. Now, here's one way to make sure that doesn't happen. 
And this is a constant battle for us. If you're dependent on your strength to keep you built up inside, you will be overcome by depression. If you're dependent on your strength and your ability to withstand all the outer pressures that you're going to face in life, you're going to be depressed because you don't have that strength. But if you allow God, by His Spirit, to be that which empowers you inside, then you can withstand all the forces of the enemy and all the outward forces and inward fears. You can withstand that because what did John say in 1 John chapter 4? Greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Think about that in that terms. If, if you were just thinking about pneumatic or air or that pressure inside, think about God who's greater inside of me is greater than any force that pushes on me. And so long as he's there, he can give you the strength to withstand. But our struggle is whether or not we're going to be in our strength or his strength, amen? Whether or not we're going to let him empower us, we seek to empower ourselves. And, and none of us are 100% in that because, as I told you, the first statement we make is that everyone and anyone at some time in their life will struggle with depression. Even David. We find David struggling. Let's look at his experience of depression. How do you say, Brother Mac, that he's depressed? Listen to verse 1 of chapter 27. Then David said to himself, Now I will perish one day by the hand of Saul. There's nothing better for me than to escape into the land of the Philistines. Saul then will despair of searching for any more in all the territory of Israel, and I will escape from his hand. So David arose and crossed over he and the 600 men who were with him to Achish, the son of Maok, king of Gath. Look at verse 4. Now it was told Saul that David had fled to Gath, so he was no long, he no longer searched for him. Let me tell you the rest of the story. We'll look at it. He goes over to the Philistines. And when he goes over to the Philistines, he goes to Achish. And he asked Achish, hey, can, can, can I live here with you? Now that was a terrible thing for a devoted Jew to go to a Philistine and say, hey, can I live in your territory? Can I live in your land? And Achish said, sure, you can come live here. Why did David do that? Because David was in despair. David was depressed. David was down. And he was tired of his battle and tired of all those things. And so he leaves his homeland and he goes to the Philistines and asks for a place. And when he goes over there, he asked Achish, he said, I can't live in the, land, in the city you live in because you're royalty. Would you give me a place? And he said, okay, I'll let you to go and live in the land of Ziklag. That's going to be very important. You can go live in the land of Ziklag. And he goes and he takes his 600 men and he lives there. Well, in order to support himself, he's got to go find food somewhere. So he goes, because he's still a man of God, he goes and he attacks other ones of the Philistines who live near him. But in order to protect the fact that Achish not find out that he's attacking Philistines, he murders, he kills all the men, all the women, all the children. When it says all the men and women, it means the children as well. David does something that is unimaginable that David would do. He murders every one of them. You know why? Because if he, if he let them live, they'd go tell Achish that he's been fighting the Philistines and Achish would do battle against him. And so he was going out there doing something he'd never done before. He's murdering somebody. And when Achish asked him, where have you been? He says, oh, I've been fighting the, up there in Judah. I've been fighting the people of God. I've been fighting the Israelites. I've been going and defeating them. And Achish says, that's good. You need to fight them. Well, what did he do? He lied about it. He wasn't really fighting the people of God. He let his whole life change, and he's there living in Ziklag, living with the Philistines, and his life is radically changed from what God had it to be. And it's all because he faces depression. Depression there, you find out, is, is identified when he says in verse number one, now I will perish one day by the hand of Saul. I will perish one day by the hand of Saul. There is nothing better for me than to escape into the land of the Philistines. And then in verse 3 it says, And David went and he lived in Achish at Gath. Lived with Achish at Gath. Now listen, here's where this man who's always had the promises of God, always had the power of God, always experienced the Spirit of God, now he says, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. There's nothing good for me. There's nothing good for me. He's forgotten about the promises of God. He's forgotten about the promises of God. He's forgotten about what God's going to do in his life. He is downtrodden. And because he's downtrodden, he says, 
I'm going to go live with the Philistines. The Philistines were the arch, in, arch enemy of the, of the Jews. It is not the place where he should go. It's not the place he needs to be. And he, you find it, that's where I want to go. I want to go out there and be with the Philistines. And he goes and he lives among the Philistines. And his life is radically changed because he is depressed. Now, why is he depressed? That's one of the most important. What are the reasons for his depression? Well, he has some pretty good reasons. If you want to just mark them up of why somebody have reasons for depression, he'd have pretty good reasons. Well, one of those things is, is that Saul is his enemy, and Saul, it says, never, ever stops battling him and fighting him. Matter of fact, right in your Bibles there, in chapter 23, verse 14, it says that Saul never stopped day by day. He continued to battle. He continued to search. He continued to try to kill David. Every day he faced this enemy, Saul. Every day he faced this battle, and he never, ever would quit. He never, ever would relax. He never, ever would give up. He constantly, constantly, was fighting against David. Isn't that something? A second reason that he had to be depressed is that there was really no reason for it. There, there was no reason for it. I, I mean, they were, he, was, he was being fought against because it was total misunderstanding. Saul was after him, not because David had done anything wrong. David had done nothing but just be loyal to him. But Saul was after him. Saul was going to do it. And, and it was no reason for it. He was being mistreated. He was being attacked. He was having battle against him for no reason at all. Even in the case of Nabal, we saw last week, there was no reason for Nabal to treat him that way. But he was being attacked because of misunderstandings, because of things he had never done. And, and in that situation... Whenever you have somebody who's attacking you and somebody who's after you all the time and there's no reason for that and you've not done anything wrong, it's just them, do you know what it creates in your life? It can create anger. It can create anger in your life. You get angry. He was angry at Abel. He, he gets angry at Saul. Anger happens in your life because of those circumstances, because of those situations. Well, not only did he have anger in life, but he also had been betrayed. You remember whenever David was, there are people who had been loyal to David. Whenever they find out Saul's against David, they turn to Saul. You remember the times over and over again he was betrayed. Over and over again somebody chose to be with Saul rather than him. And don't you know that that hurt his feelings? Sure it hurt his feelings. Because people who had been loyal to him, people who had cared for him, now have turned their back on him and he feels betrayed. There's something else though that he, other than just feeling betrayed, he had his family to take care of now out here in the wilderness, and he also had 600 men who were loyal to him and their families that he had to take care of as well. Could you imagine having that responsibility? The responsibility of taking care of your family, we know that one, but responsibility of taking care of 600 other families who've been loyal to you, and you've got to find them food, and you've got to find them protection, and you've got to take care of them, and there's a constant weight on you of where's the next meal coming from, and what are we going to do? And how is that going to happen? And you know what those things create? It creates fear. Fear. You ever felt that fear? Wondering how you're going to meet the responsibility? You ever wondered, had that fear of wondering how you're going to be all that you need to be? And see, whenever he gets angry and, and he gets fearful, Anger and fear left in just a boiling cauldron and just left there in your life, if it's just left there, what eventually happens is you get depressed. 